This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the perfect time and attack. Don't give up what you want, take it back. Live from the Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA, I'm Mike Sorgat, Sorgatron on the Twitter, and this is the wrestling mayhem show 618 tuesdays we've been celebrating professional wrestling here and uh, i got the crew with me this week first of all we got larry joining us did you turn your mic back on there it is hello hello larry is with us (laughs) once again here in the studio yep and also before he goes on his uh sabbatical uh, making rocket chips or some such. It is Mad Mike from Poughkeepsie, New York. Oh, yeah. We're in the final countdown because I really don't know how many times I'm going to be able to podcast. There you go. So we're getting it all in. We're getting it all in. You know, the last few times we have the only Mayhemmer with a uh, future Endeavor letter from the WWE. That's for real. <laughs> yes. People might think I make that shit up. Or, nope. that, or people think that, that I you make me say that. No, I trust me. If I if I was gonna make you say something, I'd make you say some way funnier shit. <laughs> but that's just true. <laughs> We're just talking in the facts here. And this week we have our special guest with us here in the studio. He is the apex of combat. He is the Rise Wrestling Grand Champion. Not that he has the belt, unfortunately, because that got stolen from him uh, Saturday night by Derek Direction. But Lee Moriarty is here with us. In the studio, he's oh, a little yeah, bring that about up. that. I mean, he's a little sore. I'm just saying, people wondering where the belt's at. That that's why no, maybe they've seen the. U- I mean, it has to be brought up. You is, know, is he angry? I, he... I can't tell. <laughs> I'm very angry. You're very, you're very angry. If this was anime, I would have those little red triangle things on my head right now. Or or what? I, on anime, when they get angry, there's like the little. I always watch the ones when they get angry. They turn into chibi versions of themselves. Never seen those. You ever seen those ones like Dragon? Oh Hap yeah, or anything Teen like Titans. That? Teen Titans, Teen Titans, yeah, the Teen Titans, Titans thing, Titans. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you're like a Teen Titan, probably. You're right mi- you're mini Lee, mini, because you're very angry. I'm the swelter weight. I'm too <laughs> too big to be mini. The swelter weight. <laughs> That's awesome. How you been since last time you've been on the show? I know we were in the basement last time you were with us. The basement. I know this place is a lot nicer. Not that the basement sucked, but this is cool too. So I've been good. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. We were having fun with Lee uh, on uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show Gold. If you want to check it out, if you're a part of our Patreon this week, uh, we were we were we were helping Lee learn how to be mean, <laughs> giving him heel lessons. Yes, we're. <laughs> I don't need to learn how to be mean. I'm already mean. I'm scary. Yeah, well, you're, I think you're we were real worrying, scary. We we're worrying on the scary part and 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 the and the face tattoo and and that kind of stuff. <laughs> It's fucking terrifying. Yes. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Tell other people. I'll, I'll be honest. I feel like we made some real progress. Yeah, yeah. We're yeah. getting there. There you go. Mayhem bump. It's like a 12-step program. It is. You're on step one. Step one. And a half. You have to come back 11 more times. What? <laughs> <laughs> See you next week, sir. This, this is, this is going to be like a best of seven series for you. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. I think we could get a Rocky montage out of this. Ooh. But it's all like him sitting on the couch making faces. Yeah, but you can still put the music behind it. Yeah, we could. We could just put it under this whole segment. Or or we could get like a hover round that goes upstairs and still play Eye of the Tiger while making faces going up the stairs very slowly. Or we could get him to run up that really steep hill that everybody is obsessed about around here. Guys. Which one? Yes. The, the I, really steep one. I do need to point out. Producer Missy. I do need to point out. Side. Yes. Honey Badger's in the chat room. Yes. Honey Badger is is a scary being in and of herself. She can frown. She is saying she that is Lee terrifying. is She's good at the frowning. meanest person in professional wrestling. Thank you. I am the meanest person ever in professional wrestling. I, I think wrestling. that that holds a little credence to it. Huh? I don't, what's credence mean? Uh, huh? It's a band from like yes. the 60s. Um, no, it's, it, it, holds, it holds some weight with her saying it. Swelter weight? No, a little heavier than that because it, it holds some pretty decent weight. Nothing's heavier than the swelter weight. 
How much does this welterweight weigh? Oh, is this one of those woodchuck things? <laughs> <laughs> if I tell you how much this welterweight weighs, Dombrowski's going to kick me off of the eye pay per views because technically I don't make weight. You do make weight. What are you talking about? You can't say that on air. Wait, I think I filmed you making weight, didn't I? There's video. I think there's video evidence on the bonus features for uh, World of Weight Wrestling 3. Or did you only have one foot on the scale? Uh, I don't know. The first, the did, second did World of Weight show, out I broke body it double? by accident. Did you, did you pay off the referee? <gasps> Maybe. I mean, he cost me the match, so. Did you get a face tattoo or a hot dog? The referee? Yeah, I thought everybody gets paid in face tattoos and hot dogs now. That's why, like half of the low, <laughs> half, half of the lower weight roster is well fed. The other ones just inexplicably have face they tattoos. They have tetanus. It's very weird. They have, they have tetanus. It's very weird. Anyways, this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. You can check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow dot com. Thanks to our intro and music by Basic Sickness at BasicSickness dot com. He's had a new video here recently. Um, you can subs- You can email the show at that email address. Good times. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow dot com. You okay, Larry? Yeah, you I was, okay. I was, your, your office. Though. I was reading and I completely you reading, tuned you out. You were, you were watching the show secondarily. I was, re- I was reading the chat. You were on it. I was reading the You're, chat. <laughs> uh, also, drop us a line the four one two two zero six WMS zero at Mayhem Show on the Twitter or Facebook. Uh, please join the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group for a lot of great conversations. I pulled a few stories from that for us to talk about this week and also please subscribe to the show on itunes citrus Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and google play music video versions on the wrestling ma'am show youtube and facebook page and we are here live every tuesday on that facebook page at 9 p.m eastern time on facebook live and check out all the other things uh, we do go live on the indie wrestling.us for things like the intermissions at things like rise wrestling i know we ran into you and we were talking about your birth day nope. no we, not you're not birthday. your unbirthday uh, uh the other day happy birthday and other things no. happy unbirthday no uh, it wasn't nope. my birthday nope no, you're gonna have the longest birthday celebration you didn't want ever uh happy Rusev day <laughs> happy, happy, happy Rusev Rus- oh wait 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 while we're at it oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, here, oh, here it is oh, yeah it's Rusev day we're good we're good we're good happy Rusev day uh but anyways where was i with the rundown uh here we're here every tuesdays so you can join us in this 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 action and watch me put the camera in the wrong place. Yes, live, live, folks. Um, also, please support us on Patreon. We have a very special thing happening for Patreon for the month of... Is this May? This is May. This is May? It's going to be May. It's so Rusev May. And uh, if you donate to Patreon, if you're already donating, cool. If you're not, just give little as a dollar. You won't miss it. If you're digging what's happening here, if you get value and entertainment out of this show, really appreciate it if you do support it. Cameraman Rob, that's been on the show, and you can find Ringside at things like Rise Wrestling, IWC, etc. Uh, uh, left us a few gifts. And this month, hold on, we have a prize. If you donate at least a dollar to the Patreon this month, uh, we were going to be putting all those names in a hat a, well, a hat or a, a, a lucha mask or something. Um, either way, it'll 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 happen. And we have a full sized um, skyscraper skyscraper poster with Dwayne Johnson, the guy that looks eerily like The Rock, and, and Michael Jordan in that. Photo. So you too <laughs> can take some markers, put some glass over it, and draw physics lines of him jumping off of this crane, right? And this, I didn't realize this. It's two sided. And the other side is like mirror image. I can't turn it around because it's too big. Well, if it's a mirrored image, it's we're a, gonna we're gonna see the same thing anyways. Yeah, there. It's a mirror oh, image. Oh, that's us, look, weird. Look, it's backwards. That's <laughs> so really weird. You can just put it on your front window. I don't know if I like um, that. You don't like that? <laughs> it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. So go uh, check that out, uh, please. Uh, Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. We'll be giving that out, and we have uh, we have some other good goodies we might be giving out. Uh, in the future as well so we appreciate you guys supporting the show literally helping us keep the lights on here in the studio like our friend bo diggity Woo. Woo. ed burke to, uh, bobby fj town tina keys the matthew and jennifer foundation uh for podcast betterment all at the fan of the show one dollar level on the pocky club five dollar level where we're going to talk more about face tattoos this week occupy pro wrestling christopher bishop bradley ruthers the uh the first guest on the If You Wheel show this week, and as well as <laughs> as well as Doc Remedy, and uh, I'm sorry, Lee's like uh, there's a bunch of kids outside. <laughs> yeah, <I laughs> yeah, that happens a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
at the Pizza Club $10 level, there are, again, things like the state of the show every month, Billy Johnson and J.D. Jones. Thank you so much. You guys can support us, too, at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Yes, Paul, it goes both ways. Um Oh, <laughs> uh, thank you, chat room, for uh, hanging out with us tonight. It's going to be a fun one. So, uh, unfortunately, I, I was looking at the items for this week, and 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 there's a lot of negativity right now when it comes to a lot of the wrestling we're watching. Uh, so I wanted to kind of bring it. Nope, that's not terribly. You know what? Japan has it going on right now. Maybe we weren't <laughs> happy with Backlash. Maybe we weren't we're not happy with. With some of the other things going on, um, like my, like the setup for Money in the Bank that I know Larry's going to talk about here in a little bit. But that's okay, because Chris Jericho popped up again, guys, um, and attacked Naito in the most painful Lucha mask pull-off I think I've ever seen. <laughs> Did you see that, Lee? Yeah, it was like three sizes too small for his head. <laughs> yeah, it looked like he ripped his face off. I think they gave him a children's mask. Yeah. Do you have mascara on? He did, yeah, like black lipstick going because the guy he was mimicking Bushi, whereas like black oh, lipstick. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I was wondering about that too because I didn't get uh, the clip I saw. You didn't, you saw him after he started attacking, yeah. and I think that's generally the clips that's out there, right? So. I didn't know if Jericho was slowly becoming Sting. Like, <laughs> well, he does all the did. rocker stuff too, so like, like that really goes along with it, you know. I think we're missing something really important about this Jericho returning to New Japan thing. Hmm. When he came out in the uh, in the Greatest Royal Rumble at number fifty, mm-hmm. Kevin Owens screamed at him, "Go back to Japan, stop bothering me." <laughs> and Jericho listened to Kevin Owens. <laughs> that was kind of the greatest moment too, wasn't it? <laughs> Why are you even here? Go back to Japan. Stop bothering mm-hmm. me. Um, but I mean, once this... again, Kevin Owens is responsible for a great thing in wrestling. I think I was talking, uh, Larry, was I talking with you or somebody else that I'm actually considering, like, whatever this event is that these guys are going to actually, you know, go at, it's going to be like whatever I'm guessing it's going to be whatever, like, kind of their SummerSlam is, right? Like, their mid year event. Like, yeah. I, I'm considering picking up, uh, Kingdom again to, to whatever that is. Mm-hmm. You know, like, let's, let's take a second jump into New Japan. I almost dropped the WWE network, but, <gasps> and got, uh, New Japan instead, but that darn ride along and you, table. You get it. But Larry, how else would you watch 205 Live? What? Hulu. Hulu. Oh, okay. That's, that's what Hulu, it's on Hulu as well, guys. Okay. So, you okay. know, if you do have a problem with that, you'll get your SmackDown. You get a, you get a, a truncated version of Raw, which is probably for the best in the long run. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Besides, the, the, the two, the cruiser weights. In New Japan are way better than the cruiserweights on WWE. So, uh, yeah. just saying, I'm just saying, it's the environment. It's the environment, right? Yeah, it is. I mean, is. if the, the guys, guys on 205 have, Live were given the time that the guys in New Japan were given, I'd say they're probably pretty. Comparable. I mean, take anybody in in 205 Live and go find their matches in like Evolve or Dragon Gate, right? Yeah, because they're gonna be what you think of for that. That's what got them to WWE. Yep. So. And a lot of them wrestle. Well, I know TJ Perkins wrestled in New Japan when he was a teenager. Mm-hmm. So a lot of guys come from that background too. Yeah, but they're not wrestling that style anymore. They can't. They have to wrestle four or five know. days a week. That's my point. Yeah, yeah. That's the <laughs> I mean, as, as, I mean, as an indie wrestler, you're wrestling like maybe if you have a good weekend three, right? Yeah. So to go from that to the four or five days, like the slog that they have, plus all the traveling, it, it just it, it's going to be different. Mm-hmm. You already over there, Mike? Yep. Okay. <laughs> you're, Sorry, you're, I didn't know you had the camera on me. You, you, no, no, no you're, we you're, did. Your we chair was saying hi. Oh, okay. Really oh. badly. No, I'm good. <laughs> uh, but anyways, uh, no, no, you, you know, do Japan's, I, I think, is good. It's good to see that it's not just like a, he pops in for the big show and that's it, mm-hmm. right? Like, this has been kind of throughout. And, of course, their they're week to weeks and everything happened a little, a little different. Looks like... It looks like someone slapped him with a glass. If you uh, go on Access TV right now, uh, well, not this second, but I think they have back episodes. Uh, New Japan, the New Japan Cup semifinals were happening. Thanks, uh, and that's kind of a nice way to to jump into that too. Yeah, because you do have like Jr. kind of you know transitioning that for you. It's it that's it, the one thing that I don't stay with New Japan World for because it's hard to keep up. 
Mm-hmm. Right? It's too much on top of like, you know, keeping up with WWE, trying to watch a little bit of Ring of Honor. Um, God forbid some indie wrestling and some impact wrestling here and there, right? Uh, and of course, what's coming back next month? And then there's something else. Yeah. So it was just yeah. a, yeah, it's only $10 a month ish, right? After the, tra- after the translation. Um, but it's, it didn't feel like I got enough of it to make it worthwhile, right? It's cool to drop back and I'm like, hey, here's Hulk Hogan in the 80s in Japan for some reason. Yeah. It's like, cool. But then that's, that fades after a while. Juice, Rob- Juice Robinson and, uh, uh, who's it tanahashi had a crazy match last week in the one of the semifinals nice juice robinson holy crap what yeah, a what a he, turnaround i mean of guys he was insane he's uh, you know kind of the most improved right so uh <laughs> i got i got somebody doing somebody's outside doing pointing and thumbs up and Fucking did he just weirdo. did he just finger gun you yeah, I think he yeah. did. To Kevin Hart. Is he in the Bullet Club? I no, don't know. I, I don't it know. Looked, it's like it's like he knew. It looked like you guys are saying Pee Wee he... Herman in his casual. Work. <laughs> are we sure it's not Dutters? I don't know. That no, was not Dutters. Not, not Dutters. He was like sneaking up to the side of the window and saying no, hi to me. It, it looked like weird. Pee Wee Herman in, ca- in his casual wear. You know, never, we've been here for a while now. People are getting really confident and <laughs> and, and doing weird stuff on the window even more. So we, I, I got to get another camera on the window. Somebody's gonna lick that window pretty somebody soon. Is, oh, I'm sure somebody has. Come it's on, let's be, be honest. It's, Spark, Sparkle Pants is gonna come over here and lick that window from the Bruins and then charge you for it. <laughs> charge me for it. Oh, I feel like I'm in Thailand again. Um, anyways. What? Sorg, I, while we're on the subject of New Japan, there is something that's pretty cool that's happening. Hmm. The Bullet Club are getting their own pop figures. Yeah, yeah. they are. The yep. first non-WWE wrestlers to get their own pop figures, which is amazing. And this is not like... Because th- Bullet Club... Is Bullet Club owned by them and not like New Japan or Ring of Honor? I, Bullet Club's I, owned by New Japan. It isn't owned yeah, by owned New by, Japan. It's owned by yeah. New Japan, yeah. But of course they're gonna cut or whatever for mm. you know their percentage deal and everything, right? Yeah. So did so and I think New Japan shirts are also available at Hot Topic, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, there's yeah. A lot so of... that's part of that stuff. Yeah, it, they have a lot of merch at Hot Topic. Like mm. I went to one Hot Topic in Danbury and it was all New Japan merch. No WWE merch. Wow. No WWE and merch. And that's like, like right like, in the heart of WWE co- country, too. And, I, and I'm talking like there were in Gobernable shirts. There was the Jericho Alpha Club shirt. There was wow. everything you can think of. Like anything that you could possibly want from New Japan was there. It's good to see. That's real good to see. Yeah. All right. Let, let me go. All right. Positive note number two. Yes. Before we get to the meat of this week. Lucha Underground, the the spoiled meat of this week. The uh, (laughs) somebody, somebody actually messaged like messaged me or was talking to me. Was like, "Hey, you see Lucha Underground's coming back this week. You guys ready for it?" I'm like, "Dude, it's just the it's just the trailer." Like we just had a sneak. I I said, "Yeah, I said that. I thought I thought that it was the premiere this week." No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you were saying uh, Matt was going to do a uh, play by uh, frame by frame. No, because that's what he's done before. Yeah, yep. I didn't realize that it was just the trailer, though. Yep. Just the trailer. <laughs> We're going to get like a minute and a half oh, of yeah. Lucha Underground goodness. Even the mm-hmm. like 10 seconds we got was amazing. Because yep. I want to see what the heck is going on with the Rabbit Trap <laughs> in general, <laughs> right? Because When is it airing? Did they say? Uh, June, June. Like, yeah. It's like, no, like what day of the week are they putting? Are they Same day. Same Wednesday. day. It always is. Wednesday? Yep. Yeah. So I, I don't know what more we can say about it. It's going to be tomorrow. By the time you guys hear this, it's going to be like hours away or, or you've seen it already. Mike, you've been following this since the beginning. <laughs> this is the first time I'm, I get to experience a new season from the start. <laughs> having caught up, I, he's doing the dance. He's doing the dance, guys. I'm so excited. I can't wait. But it's kind of, isn't, isn't it kind of refreshing that it's something that has a time off? It's not yeah. a, hey, WrestleMania is over. We're going right into something else that maybe is not as great, you know, that we might be seeing. I mean, Lee, are you are you following the Lucha Underground stuff? Yeah, I do. You, I feel like you would. Yeah, it seems like you're the style. Yeah. <laughs> like, Roz is in a movie theater, and I filmed a promo for my match against Chris LaRusso, and I edited it to make it look like a movie. Mm-hmm. The reason I did that was because of Lucha Underground. So, like, it's influenced me outside of the ring, too. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, that, that's one thing I, I don't think people know. Like, when those videos pop up on your thing, like, you've edited those yourself. Yeah, those videos before the matches, the yeah. main event. Yeah. I yeah. Like those. So you get to make the, the intro video to your own main event. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'll do them from other stuff, too, if they ask me. It's just... Mm -hmm. Growing up, I always liked watching those things when I was a kid, like WrestleMania and all that. So I wanted to learn how to do it. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, and of course, those are those are definitely featured like on the Rise Wrestling uh, uh, digital downloads and VODs that yeah. we have up on IndieWrestling.us, and you can see them for yourself. And that's and that's something I think I, you or Brandon was telling me like that's something for the people there, you know, that are seeing it. Like you guys don't put that on the internet beforehand nah. or anything. It's just like a hype video to get the audience going. Right. Yeah, it's like a special treat and saying thank you for coming to see us. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. So definitely go check those out on those releases, or or and of course the shows have been in rotation as well on Twitch, uh, yeah. trying to get trying to get a, a lot of the stuff uh, in front of more eyeballs over there yeah. too. So that's awesome. So yeah, and, and I know that's because I'm hearing that from promotions. You know, definitely guys in, in Rise Wrestling with you and 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 around like oh we didn't do something like Lucha Underground. It's just like. Well, here we go. Now everybody <laughs> wants to do something like Alicia Underground, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but but like not, not a lot of people can because that's a very, it's a different environment, right? Mm -hmm. It's a produced environment. It's seasonal, you and know. It's people who work with TV, not with wrestling. Yeah, like they, they work on actual TV shows, so they're like they're editing for completely different content than mm -hmm. a normal wrestling like package would be and it's a mix too right it, it, it's people that worked with wwe have worked in wrestling but then you have like eric van wagden that worked on you know reality shows mm -hmm. so like there is that little bit of vibe but not the part that made the american gladiator come back shitty i'm curious like how uh how much of a learning curve there is on both sides like the people who are coming in from the wrestling background trying to do like like actual like t TV content now, I think, and then the TV people trying to do you, you'd like go the to, wrestling. You'd stuff. have to go back to because I think in some of our interviews with Krista Joseph or the one we did with Eric Van Wagden, like they did discuss mm -hmm. that a little bit, didn't they, Mike? Oh yeah, I'm I'm just about positive we've talked about that at some point. Yeah, because I think there's a little bit of like, well, can we just redo this part? It's like mm, mm -hmm. it doesn't really work that way, right? Yeah, you know the way you film and and it's like you don't really get reshoots <laughs> of a match as easily, you know. You're not, you're not you do get reshoots of promos though. Yeah, of course. We're not but... going to put his eye out with the cigar toys. <laughs> I mean, who was it talking about? Where, um, geez, this is going to bug me now. But there were there was something about, or it was maybe somebody we were talking with uh, on on Undy Mayhem said so they they watched like. Like Triple H and Kurt Angle, like retake about ten times an interview. I feel like this was an Edge and Christian interview or something. And, and and you know, even them or Paul Heyman are are doing like ten takes to get to that one you see, yeah. right? Like that's okay, you know, if it's not an in ring promo in front of people, right? That that you got to get or at least make it work, right? Yeah, and it's a different animal. I think Jimmy Jacobs talked about it in the seminar. He said Stephanie McMahon and Paul Heyman did like 10 tapes of backstage taping. That's where I heard it from. Yeah. That's where I heard it from. Um, so, I mean, that, and that, that's kind of like, it opens you up because I mean, I think, you know, wrestlers are saying, well, I got to hit, I got to hit the, hit the mark on all this stuff every time, yep. you know, and, and then you get to something big like that. And it's like, Oh no, we can, we can, we can do this again. That's okay. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Well, I want to talk a little bit more about, well, we'll, we'll see. We'll try to keep this positive as much as we can here this week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You hear the groans. You hear the groans as if he just watched the entire season. It's almost like we're going to have some sort of backlash against something. Oh, oh. shame on you. <laughs> oh, shame. but in the meantime, I want to give a shout out to our friend uh, Rico. Actually, cooked tonight's pizza at Slice on Broadway. Nice. It was surprising. He's usually over at the East End location. He's usually at whatever the newest location is, right? Uh, uh, you know, getting them set up and everything. Slice on Broadway, four locations here in the Pittsburgh area. Right here, the old school, the OG on Broadway, right up the road from us, uh, is 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 the main attraction, I feel. And the OG, and of course, there are other locations over in the East End, PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates, and Carnegie PA. They've been supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza for a good a long time here. And it was good to catch up with our old friend Rico, and and I know he did he did enjoy. It. We need to give him the clip because he saw that we had Mambo Italiano on uh, a, a few weeks ago, give, doing an Italian um, ad for him. So I, I promised to clip that out so he can get that. He's excited to get that, um, and hopefully 
I, I know I plugged it through Google Translate to make sure it was okay as much as I could understand. So, <laughs> um, but uh, thank you to our friends, sliceonbroadway.com, pjh underscore slice on the Twitters. And uh, thank you, you guys. I know a lot of you guys have been hitting me up and say you've been hitting them up at their multiple locations um, all the time. And, uh, and and thanks for, you know, I, I feel like we, it, it feels like we've been with them since that first location. I think the Mayhem Bump's been helping them along the way. You know, and uh, it's been really cool. A bunch of cool people that work in there and everything, too. So thanks a lot to them for supporting the mayhem. All right. So there was a pay-per-view this past weekend. and If you can call it that. <laughs> I'd like to think of it as a Sunday night heat, but you can call okay, it what you want. Okay. I'd like to think of it as one good match surrounded by a rest of crap. There were, there were, you know what? No, that's not fair. There were at least two. There were two good matches. There were there was were there? Yeah. What was the second one? The Styles Nakamura match was good. <laughs> it was good. It had a very it Larry, had a very sad nuts. it had a sad I think ending. You're nuts. But I enjoyed it. I think you're going balls out crazy with that. What are you trying oh, to say, a Mike? Ma- a match quality can be ruined by a finish. Match quality can be ruined by a finish. It was fun until the no, they're not really just gonna kick each other in the nuts and end it, are they? Oh, and a no, a no DQ match can can have a double count out? Really? And, really? And that you was know what? Nice. If this was the first, if this was the first time they were doing a no finish, okay, fine. This is the second time in a row that we're doing a no finish. Yeah. Well, like, watch that match. Does it count? I don't know if that's a double count out though. It, I mean, that's what they down. said. They said it was a double count out. It's like the two competitors cannot continue the match. It's he, like didn't a referee he a, stoppage. He did a ten count, and, didn't yeah. he? Yeah, but they weren't outside their ranks. So I think no, but that's still it's still a count out. Is, a count it's out. I, I've seen a count out classified as a DQ. Yeah. Right. I mm-hmm. think this count out is passable for it being a DQ match. If it was them outside the ring, yeah, it'd be dumb. It seems a stretch. But can, it's can, like, can, really? is it really a stretch though? After the cage match that Roman and Brock just had. <laughs> And also, really? how has AJ not put on a cup yet? That's what I want to know. That's a good like, question. What the fuck? That's what we're <laughs> leading to. Yeah. He should have a cup with thumbtacks sticking out of it. Come on. Batman figured it out the second time he met Joker. Right? That's See? Is, there you go. Do the thing. Don't get shot. Um, Wear a cup. Wear a cup. I mean, the equivalent, I guess. I'm, okay, maybe it's stretching. <laughs> That's stretching. Just like the finish of that match. Um, but... Oh boy, I, I this is if there was a gift that was uh, that was shared, I believe, on Sunday night of of uh, um, of Vince McMahon, and we I brought this up last night on the Raw wrap up uh, from the XFL uh, press conference saying um, it's hard for people to digest a three to three and a half hour game. Uh, yep, and sure is. Now our pay per views keep stretching past that eleven o'clock mark, That's and, and 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 people left Newark because th- we were on the East Coast. It's a school night, and you're stretching this thing to eleven thirty. You I'm know, pretty sure even if that thing was in the middle of the summer, people would have left. You, yeah, but but still, just just in general, like oh, this thing ends by eleven. I'm gonna go hit my train because I got to get out of New Jersey. Um, no you know, one wants to get stuck in Jersey. It, that, that's I, a that's exactly. a fair sentiment. That's yeah. a fair sentiment. Yeah. So so I mean I think I think there was that it, it was it was matches like you felt like why did we move a half an hour and then got this got a basically a musical break in the middle that I feel was like we that was already good part. need I a superstar shakeup. Yeah, it feels like it's kind of mixed things up a little bit they, too much. Well, it's not that we need a superstar shakeup. It's just they. have They've done too many so far. Yeah, they did. It's almost like they, they should just have a draft of ten people. They they did a shake up, and then they had the draft, and then they and and I feel like had we, the titles. We've moved into like, all the problems that we stepped away from when we split the brands again. Was these pay per views where, like, nobody's getting featured? There was no tag match. Like there, there's no yeah. The tag matches have already suffered. The tag divisions already suffered. The cruiserweights have already suffered because all of them got let go from this thing. Will they be on Money in the Bank? Who knows? Maybe because they're going to feature. So many I didn't people see the Money pre-show. The were they on the pre-show? Uh, they were not on the pre-show. No, nope. the, pre- the pre-show was Bailey and Ruby and Riot. Ruby Riot. What? Yeah, that doesn't Which even was make actually sense. A decent match. But that doesn't make sense. 
They're doing this thing that are they, are they having has, a feud? They're doing this thing that Ruby has beat like three different women's champions, so she's probably going to be gunning for the title next. Now that uh, yeah, and 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 you know Ruby, all this momentum she has, it makes perfect sense to put her in the Money of the Bank match, right, Sork? But why is it on the? <laughs> oh wait! Oh no, wait. no, no! She gets the title match while all the rest of them uh, uh, fight for the uh, Money in the Bank. I. Nope, this. I doubt that. I bet. I bet. I doubt that. It's like if she is. Oh, if they're pushing her so she, hard, why no. is she on the pre-show? Oh, well, because because they ran out of room on the main show for the musical acts. Um, that was a great segment. It was fun. Don't get me wrong. It was fun. It was fun to a certain point, but what the fuck are we doing with Bobby Roode? He should just go back down to NXT. <laughs> yeah, there's that too. Um, what's, what's Bobby Roode's not a good face. He was never a good face. Not even in TNA. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> he worked in NXT because he was a damn heel. Mm-hmm. If someone just walks in your face and says, guess what? I'm glorious. They're a fucking douchebag. There was, there was an interesting, there was an interesting discussion we had last, last night about um, all of the people that, that are, are over being cheered. Uh, your Balors, your uh, 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 Sammies, and your and your KOs, um, all not in the play in the bank. <laughs> yeah, um, of all places. Sorg, uh, and apparently, I think Kurt Angle fucked up last night. Okay, because Paige said that there's only two Money in the Bank matches, mm-hmm. a men's and a women's. Kurt last night said there were three. No, he said there were three qualifying matches. Last night. I uh, know. I I think he said. I think he meant there were three qualifying matches. I think he said that there were three Money in the Bank matches. Alex said there's going to be a tag team Money in the Bank match. I don't know if that's something that might have been announced tonight uh, on SmackDown. Perhaps that is. Paige didn't announce if it. That's true. Uh, no, no. <laughs> Why? I I think that's an interesting idea. It's a way to shake things up. Yeah, I mean, uh, we've had a tag team uh, elimination chamber in the past. So, what's but, the point of doing a tag team Money in the Bank match if they're not going to show tag team matches on pay per views? Uh, something to do with the division, I guess. Um, <laughs> where? Well, the, the problem is <laughs> where are they going to the, do the, it? The, the problem is in the meantime. Now we're getting things like uh, Elias and Bobby Roode are having a feud week to week on Raw. I'm fine with that, just You're because okay they're, with that? they're both entertaining. Okay. It's not it. Yeah, it passes the time. It passes the time. It passes the time. Elias it passes. Is there, I, I, Elias I is loved, entertaining. Bobby Roode is not. I loved. I loved the JoJo stuff last on Sunday with him trying to having D- JoJo restart his entrance. I music. love that the first part, which like like JoJo get it started. I'm like, is JoJo have the light switch <laughs> or something? Like, did you seemed... guys? Did you guys see the uh, the back glass post show? Uh no. Because we just um, like everybody that was left here really wanted to get the fuck home. That's fair. I don't. <laughs> like, I, 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 I watched our pay per view morning. party. People were leaving. Wait, what post show? They had, they a, had they, a post show. Yeah, they had a post show. Like when they had the like, like dark sp- match, kind of things. Um, things. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Elias. Like Elias was on it, and he sang his song on the post show, and they dimmed the lights and put a spotlight over him in the post show. Now I kind of wish I watched this. And the Miz is on the post show, and the Miz is always great and he insulted Pierre Rosenberg the whole time so I love the Miz even was more the than Miz, I did before was the Miz on during Elias's performance he came on afterwards oh damn but I also also like, kickoff one of the greatest things again with Peter Rosenberg was uh the iconics messing with him yes of and course I, I'm sure it's right, Bobby I, F J Town's favorite point of the night I want to make a petition right now I, I tweeted this out before we went uh on air I want the Iconics to be the new Miz-Raj. What? Like I want, I want who? all three of them. Like four Miz? Co- yes, I want, I want them to come out with the Miz at the same time. Wait, so they can be iconically awesome. The interesting, <laughs> interesting. It's it's the it's the best promo people on the show all working together, and I think it would be amazing. Hmm. I think it would be amazing, especially We're considering that especially considering that Oscar is in the women's division, and the history of Miz and Oscar, yeah. you can totally you can totally do a whole bunch of really cool stuff. That's interesting. That's interesting. I mean, I'm trying to imagine this right yeah. now. Yeah, like, like I'm 
I'm I'm tipping my hand for next year's Mayhem Mania. Miz and the Iconics versus Brian and the Bellas. Can we talk That's about That's going to be my match. <laughs> Can we talk about how stupid that name is though? The Iconics. The Iconics? Yeah, yeah the Iconics is a stupid name. Every it should have just been the Iconic duo. Every but... time I see it like come up on the Jumbotron, I think it says the comics, like just comics. But the it works, the, the I Iconics. So they, yeah, but it just looks so like two Roman numeral okay. twos. But, but there are already two eyes in the word iconic. But they use the two eyes as their body silhouettes for the shirts. I stuff. know, it's, but it's but magic. they did that. It's magic. They, <laughs> but but they did that on NXT too. They just had Billy as the first eye and Peyton as the second eye. Yeah, it was it's stupid. The name works because of the shirt graphic. But you, the shirt graphic is different you, now. Do you, have an, what? Huh? Do, you, do you have an iconic shirt? Don't worry about all that. No? Huh? Yeah, what? what? I'm I I'm buying their new iconic shirt. I don't care. I'm supporting them. I, I'm I'm uh I'm not. <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. I, 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 I will give I will I, I, if I'm, I'm gonna, spending thirty dollars on a wrestling t shirt, I'm gonna buy something that I like and well, I'm not spending thirty dollars on it. I'm waiting until the buy one get one a dollar sale. Okay, that's there fair. You go. That's there fair. You go. I want to say probably not here either. Uh, <laughs> well, there is there is some other good news that came out of this week. Kevin Owens signs a five-year deal with the WWE, if you're ever worried about his status with the company, according to uh, WrestlingNews.co. Uh, and he's never going to be champion again. Oh, yeah, he will. <laughs> he will when somebody gets mm-hmm. injured and like, hey, he was good at things. Um, he doesn't need to be, though. Yes, no, no he, he does. No, he, he does. He's, Sometimes you have to have the best characters on your show be the champions. Sometimes you have to have that. That's why. That's why it worked in the nineties. See, Lee, this is that's what why it works like. in the nineties. He's a very optimistic person. <laughs> Lee, like, how help Mike turn that frown upside down? What well, are you seeing the positive in this? Aren't you? Did you mute there Mike? You oh no, I'm watching the. Yeah, what? that's that's the other feed. That's the other feed. That's the other Sorry. feed. <laughs> Oh jeez! I no, I I uh, I think the stuff Kevin and Sammy are doing, like, just off to the side, is great. It's entertaining as hell. They're getting good match spots like on the show. Mm-hmm. It yeah, it's yeah, yeah those it's those fine. guys have been consistent for a while. Yeah, and since yeah, since since Hell in the Cell, since Hell in the Cell, yeah, they've been, they've been, they've been fine. Since. They have been in like the yeah. biggest non-title based story on the show. Yeah. I, I don't disagree that with any of that. That seems fine. Like they're I doing don't better. With any they're of doing that. they're do, they're doing better than a Finn Balor is right now to be quite honest. Now, yeah. Finn's turning in awesome matches. Yeah. But and he just kind of fades away. Yeah. You know? Well, he yeah. did get a win over Roman yesterday. He did. Uh, he, did. he got a win over Sammy. Yeah, yeah. That's true. He got a win over Sammy. That's true. He didn't get a win over Ro- He didn't pin I Roman for- Reigns. I got to be honest, I forgot Sammy was in the match. <laughs> Uh, Sammy was the one that well, got pinned. I, I didn't watch it. I didn't watch it. Uh, so oh, okay, I, that's, okay. What, that's why I just saw the highlights. That wasn't that wasn't a um a, a diss on Sammy yeah, at that point. I just didn't see. So, I, I just forgot he was. Is in anybody it. else excited for uh what the Miz it was it Miz and Mrs. Yes, interesting. That's yes. on USA Network. Actively excited Instead for of me? it because they are fucking adorable. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't care. You don't care? You're not going to watch The Miz and Mrs.? Nope, sorry. It's like an extended ride-along with a baby. <laughs> I'm totally watching this. I I may even do a podcast about it. I'm not sure. Unless they, The Miz Taraj is going to be there as the babysitters or the nanny. And, I oh my don't God, care. Three Miz and a little baby. <laughs> I was going to say, but your podcast can be uh, Miz, Mrs., and Mad Mike. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yep. That's terrible. No. No, you're not thinking that. No, no, no. it's not that. It was solid. Just a... you really are a heel. It's well, pretty well. confident. <laughs> How is that? <laughs> I don't like you. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right, so what get, did what did so you get lo- control your studio? What did you like from Backlash? The end. Well, <laughs> you like the no, Samoa I, Joe I, match? No, the Miz and the Miz and Rollins match was good. That was good. It, yeah, it was a I, hot start. Was. It was. And, and and I think that kind of flattened everything else after it too. Yeah. So like for the most part. Well, no. It's, I don't know. They did so they had a couple matches that could have been better if they didn't follow something that was pretty good. Like 
Wh- which match was it that followed the really entertaining uh, No Way Jose segment? Um, that was the tag match with Lashley and Braun. No, it wasn't. That followed. Yes, it was. No, the tag match was no, after. That, that was later. That was after the Styles. I think Nakamura it was the championship match. match. It was either the the Charlotte match or the. It was the Charlotte match. Yeah. Okay. No, that, I um, can't. That just blew my argument out of the sky because that match was okay. god awful. That match was not good, <laughs> Carmella. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna. Say, I was gonna say the match after the Jose, no way Jose thing was like kind of lessened because of how funny. The that segment was, but that match sucked that ass. Match I, I do like that. Carmella's that, character. That was, match was like watching a comatose person drool. Her <laughs> super kick is clean though. Uh, I don't Carmella's, care. And then like that counter out of the figure four and her little submission thingy that was nice. No, like there's some good stuff. It, that, no, no. If you're looking at mechanics, yeah, fine. She can kick somebody in the chin. That's great. But the match didn't carry. The match, the match like, was the, the, dead. It was a SmackDown match, not a paper. It wasn't match. a SmackDown yeah. match, was it? No, no. <laughs> no. They wouldn't put that on TV if they knew oh, that was going to happen. Know. I'm, I'm watching some of SmackDown. I think they'd put that on TV. I think. I think it, it, if they knew that was going to happen, they would reshoot it. It feels and like do a second it, take. They're alive. They can't do that anymore. They're no. alive. Well, yeah, now. But I'm just saying that's not something that. You would want on TV. I felt like that if you match. Knew that was going to happen. That match was missing a few commercial breaks. Um, a, pr- or, a producer or, or, or a producer. Or what are they uh, agents? I think agent. most of the show is missing a producer. Well, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, random, random. Website. It was that match sucked. That was probably the worst <laughs> match of the night. Oh man! Wow, you sound bad. like Bad Mike now. Let's see. I'm I'm auditioning. You're auditioning for that. Okay. <laughs> He's auditioning for the rap. <laughs> Larry, you don't have to audition. You you come you come with bona fides. Bona fides. I don't know French. What is he saying? I don't know. Something about your feet. I, I know someone who's vouched for you, Larry. It's okay. Oh, wow. cool. I had good references. Yes. Good. I love you walked into the podcast meetup today. I was like, oh, I didn't know this is for the podcast. I didn't. And I'm just like, but you're one of us. I saw it, it was networking and coffee. But yeah, but you were talking about like tech stuff with podcasts and shit i don't know about like whatever you do behind that desk is completely oblivious to what happened larry, happen- what larry happens a lot of times here. when sword goes on one of those ranch you just smile and nod you just smile and nod and well, say oh wow that's really interesting well i didn't have to there were other people doing that <laughs> that's fair okay i was in the background like trying to plan my unawkward exit <laughs> because i felt really bad showing up and like oh i'm out of my element i need to leave <laughs> the whole point was for you to learn something and i did and that's the whole point that i you, did that you didn't want to be here and um, i don't know what uh, it is Sork, i learned but i learned it Sorg, we have a comment in the chat room hmm. um from sean phoenix he says bobby lashley was mvp of backlash what you're he? right he's exactly like 40 ass year old mvp <laughs> Yeah. Oh. He's exactly like 40 ass year old MVP. Hey, can we talk about something? I have something else that we should rant about. <laughs> and it's on that topic. How about Bobby Lashley's behind, uh, interview on Raw? Where we learned about his family history? Oh, my God. When I thought I flipped the channel to <laughs> WWE Network by accident and felt bad for the live crowd. <laughs> what was that? I don't know. I think they're doing another one. It was strange because yeah, this guy has not talked for a month since he came back. And they're yep. just like, hey, I want to have an we, we, Renee's going to have a sit down in the he middle. Was like, it was and like he, he was on The Bachelor, like talking match. about how much he loves his parents. He has not been in a singles just... match since, he, since he's returned. Yes, he has. No, he hasn't. Yeah, his first match was a singles match. It yeah, was yeah, it was, uh, yeah, him and Elias. Elias. This is true. Yep. No, I thought he just attacked Elias. No. The second week. He, yeah, no. The, the, the first second week. Second week. Him. Yeah. They had a match. Okay. All right. I mean, granted, I, one I match. I'm in my post mania malaise then. I probably, I probably forgot about that. Yeah. You, you, it's understandable. <laughs> you were still recovering from, from your New Orleans hangover. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I swear that video will get up sometime, but I don't have time to finish it. <laughs> it's okay. It's, all, all it needs is some pictures and it's good to go. I swear this is going to be amazing. This WrestleMania video blog these guys turned in. Uh, it's but, going to be more entertaining than backlash. Oh, can we start calling it backrash? No, because it's just, it's just because it's right, uncomfortable and, and unpleasant, and you don't want to see it. 
I'm going to move some things around and some things we do want to see, like T-shirts. Shout out to our <laughs> friends at uh, uh, Power to Occupy Pro Wrestling. They're doing something pretty cool this month, uh, and I just moved the thing, and there it is. In the month of May, this is May. Don't do the thing again. Um, uh, whatamaneuver.net. Uh, if you go to the Occupy Pro Wrestling uh, store over there, uh, they're going to be donating uh, proceeds, a portion of the proceeds to the Asperger's and Autism Network. Um, and, uh, and and that's pretty swell. Uh, so go check that out. And there, Whatamaneuver's got a lot of fun stuff over there. It's uh, kind of a, a nice alternative to uh, Pro Wrestling Tees if you haven't checked it out. And uh, of course, you know, great that our friends at Occupy Pro Wrestling are represented over there. Uh, yet you, are you raising your hand? Oh, or I'm sorry. You do, are you do, you, you do your thing. <laughs> are, you, are you okay over there? I, I think Larry and I are reacting to the same thing. Is something happening on the wrestling? Yes. Yeah. Something very good. Oh, boy. Uh, but anyways, as I was saying, check out the... I'm sorry. I'm losing my place now. Occupy Pro Wrestling Store over there as soon as I can find it. And uh, some really cool stuff over there like the... There he is. Um, the uh, Lucha uh, Legends of the Lucha Temple uh, T-shirt and and so much more. Here we need to get this for uh, uh, Katie there for Dutters there, uh, Larry. How about a Smark shirt in the style of Friends? She would love that. <laughs> there you go. Uh, again, supporting autism yeah. and Asperger's awareness. Go check it out. Whatamover.net. And look for the Occupy Pro Wrestling Collection over there. Thanks to our friends over there for supporting the Mayhem Show. We'll be back with the big question regarding money in the bank. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll do one more. Oh, no. Backlash. <laughs> oh, no. Backlash 2006. This is all you need to know. Mr. McMahon and Shane McMahon defeated God and Shawn Michaels. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yep, yep. Okay, uh, we can we can close the book on back. That's it peaked right. In, peaked in 2002, folks. Yeah, yeah, while well, we've yeah, been man, on no, break. I want to check the rest of them. Just, while we've been on see. break, Mad Mike has been going through the history of Backlash because the question came up if there had been a good Backlash. <laughs> There's been um, one. There, there was one in yeah. 2001. I'm, I'm finding yeah. one good backlash. Yeah, yeah, one. I'm I'm still going through. I'm at 2008. Well, uh, at least the future's bright for great great balls of fire. So, <laughs> um, it is time for the big question. Of course, we got Mad Mike, as you see, was in there, uh, as well as Larry hanging out here in the studio. Hi, and the Rise Wrestling Grand Champion Lee Moriarty. Good morning. Where's your belt? <laughs> good morning. Uh, Don't ask don't worry him that. Don't ask him that. Oh. It's the happy half of the show. Sorry. Sorry. Backlash 2009 is good, too. Is he frowning at me? That's a good one. <laughs> I'm, I'm checking all of them now. Now I have to. It's okay. It, it came it, After 2009, they were like, we peaked. We took a break. And it came back in 2016. And, oh, we're back to it sucking. Okay. All so right. we're done. Anyways, we're done it's time for the big question. And uh, this was actually one that was submitted by Brandon out there in the KC. And I guess I, I'm seeing messages in the chat room about there may be, there may be a tag team money in the bank coming up here. Uh, but his big question, let's, let's imagine we don't know that. It's unconfirmed at this point, right? Um, if there was a third money in the bank briefcase match, or let's just say another one, uh, what title would you like it to be for? Oh, I actually have a good answer for this. I'm thinking cruiserweights. Um, no, I... I would still have it be for whatever world title, mm -hmm. but the caveat is the third Money in the Bank match. Uh, all competitors are someone who's never been in a Money in the Bank match before. Yeah, I hate those ones when, when they had the two of them and it was like, hey, this one for this title is all people that were former champions. Why like, don't they do I, that? I kind of want one that's like all competitors in this have been former champions. All competitors in this one have never been in a Money in the Bank match. Oh, they've done that. They've definitely done that before. No, they have not. They haven't? They've never done it. Hmm. Trust me. I, I mention it every year. They've never done it. I would like that for qualifying for a Money in the Bank match. Mm -hmm. You know, have like, what, there's five people in there? Eh, six, uh, six plus, let's say. There's going to be eight. 
So there's going to be eight so in this you, one. You could do five. Okay, well, per ladder match, say we'll say eight. Have uh, eight qualifying matches because you got enough people. There's certainly enough people who've held the world title to do say four. Uh, or I guess eight matches. You know where there's uh, like you said, having uh, a match with. N- people who haven't really accomplished anything and then uh former champions going yeah it needs to be a stepping stone right yeah like like that's what makes like something like a royal rumble anybody could win although realistically um you know like it needs to be like people come up out of it because that's how edge accelerated cm punk accelerated you know things like that the miz you know people um, who run for political office people that, only people that run for political office so uh, are you, are you saying saying that it should be more of like a kind of like how Super India is a, t- a tournament type of thing? Is is that what you're saying? Or like just... a King of the Ring? It should be a King of the okay. Ring. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Something With like ladders. That. Alex in the chat room says uh, he'd like to see an NXT ladder match. That'd be kind of cool if they kind of, if they were that they are doing. I mean, there is a takeover that weekend. That would be cool, and then have in the briefcase a contract for a show of your choosing. A contract for, for the main roster for a main roster, there but for a SmackDown. That's or kind of Raw. like a feast or fired situation, isn't it? Yeah. From TNA. Sorry, Mike. That'd be interesting, but they all they already kind of just did that though. What did they do? Because we did have a six man ladder title. match for the North American title. Right. True. True. But the. If you have a contract for the main roster, I feel like people will be more competitive for that than they would be for the North American Championship. Okay. Right? Because isn't everybody on NXT's goal to go to Raw or SmackDown? Right. Or 205 Live. Or 205 Live. <laughs> Maybe not two hundred five five. Uh, well, some people. I still, I, I'm still, t- I'm still gunning for a cruiserweight Money in the Bank because I think you could do a lot of fun stuff with a Money in the Bank briefcase. Just on 205 Live. They've really separated that from Raw at this point. That would be a cool thing for the tournament. Bring back the Cruiserweight tournament and have it I be... Think, I think we just did that, didn't they, we? They going literally into, just did that. Like going, going from WrestleMania. But instead of having, uh, ha- instead of having a uh, number one contendership, have it be like a Money in the Bank so they can cash in whenever they want. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. That's a lot. I don't know. That's but a if you lot have a, of... If you have a, that's a lot of steps for yeah. a guaranteed shot whenever you want. We can literally just go up to Spud and say, hi, I want a title match. And he'll say, oh, okay. Yeah. But the surprise, and also, did you make weight fella? Um, I'm, yeah. I'm sorry, Mad Mike. Who are you going up to? Jake Maverick. His name's Jake Maverick. Yeah, I know. No, I, I, no, I, I still call him Spud. It's he's, okay. He's, he and he's, I are close personal friends now. It's fine. Wait, wait, what? Why are they? Why are you guys personal, close and old? Personal? I I met him at Access twice. We had a very nice conversation. Oh, we didn't talk and, about this. Yeah, we, that's because I've been holding off because someone has the pictures that they have to go through. <laughs> oh, oh, I see. I I, I met see. Peyton Royce and Billy Kay, and they were also very lovely. Hmm. I met I met quite a few superstars. Work. I got um physically harassed by uh, Luke Harper. He's a very scary individual. Physically harassed. Well, all right, verbally, verbally, oh, ver- verbally. Okay. I felt the physicality, though. I felt it. Really? He was in my bubble. <laughs> was this on <laughs> Bourbon Street? No, no. This was at Access. Okay, I'm hmm. just checking. That meant that meant he paid for an uncomfortable experience. Wait, is he the one yes. who told you that you had to take your iPad back to your room? Oh, sorry, he, his mic's over here. He, oh she, yeah, I can. She I said, hear. she said, is he the one that told you to take your iPad back to your room? No, no, that was just some random security guard who I tricked. <laughs> Trickery. Mad uh, Mike so, one smoother zero. Some people, some people know that story from one of our after shows. But anyways, mm-hmm. um, yeah. what was the point? Oh, was there anything else? Um, Lee, did you answer? Did you have one? Mine's would be the same as yours. My cruiser weights, you think? Because I want to see stuff like. Grand I think that'd Metallic. be fun. Yeah, you know. Um, and just that, that after would be a lot of fun too. Yeah, especially with the Lucha guys in that match. Yeah, I wish they would do get rid of the two hundred five live, live part of it and shoot it like they shoot NXT. Just like four four in a row and just kick them out. Yeah, shoot it at the beginning of SmackDown. I think the shows would be better. 
I, yeah, I think so the too. Environment, you know, I think I think certain kinds of shows don't work in front of fifteen thousand people. Yeah, but if you shoot it before SmackDown, the arena's no, no, be no, 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 but no, no, no. I'm no, saying you pre, shoot it, pre-tape it. You shoot it like like full sale. You mean right? No, I'm like, saying like, like there will be more people excited at seven o'clock before SmackDown mm-hmm. than there than they will be at ten o'clock. After a main event, of no, because th- that's what they used to do. That's it, what they used to do for like superstars and main event. Yeah, and but these are yeah, main, but, no, but you're not no you're not get you're not getting our main event matches. Yeah, you're, yeah. it's completely different. Uh, you're you got they might as well be. Why they're doing so? <laughs> no, no, but they're doing storylines just like they do for NXT. If you if you main event had storylines too, it did. I don't main know. event had storylines too. Okay, um, but if you take the live out of 205 live it's a huge demotion and you might as well make smackdown three hours at that point it's no different it's no different than what nxt does at takeover no when they shoot when they they shoot the matches for the next week at before the show starts that's that's more of a logistic issue though Mm -hmm. that's more of a logistic issue because then they'd have to get uh from the saturday all the way back to full sale yeah, but 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 still, and it's also a different environment because everybody's there for a pay per view. It's the only show they do like yeah. quarterly. It's the only like show that. they do live. So I think there's a different energy versus every week on a SmackDown, right? Yeah. So I, I I partially agree with you, but I'm in the they should do it like NXT, as in they should do it like NXT, just a well, straight like, studio. They should show. do it as a studio show because I think I, again, I think that I really think that wrestling is just works better in front of that smaller crowd. They uh, could just have it as part of SmackDown. There's no reason to say that they couldn't do that. So you're saying make SmackDown a three hour show and just integrate no. it into the middle? Then what are you gonna no. watch then you go what are you gonna watch Chris Lee Knows Best? I'm never going to watch Chris Lee Knows. That's not gonna happen. No yeah, yeah. No, no. There's a better chance of me watching that than watching any th- of the total whatever's fellas <laughs> or Mr. Mrs. Ones. Yeah. One day, one day. Only, you, be, only because you my, and I are going to sit down and watch a, a total Bellas. But the only reason that there's a better chance of me watching that is because I'll forget to turn off the USA uh, channel after SmackDown, and it'll still be on. JD says. So, JD says. Plus, if you take off the live, there's no rhyme. If it doesn't rhyme, I ain't watching. Absolutely. absolutely. There you go. That's Brandon point. says. Brandon says he wants to see one of the mid card titles in one of the money in the banks. Could you see like an Intercontinental or Why? something? I, I think you could. You should have a Money in the Bank match where you can literally go for any title you want. Mm-hmm. You can literally go for any title you want. There's so you many. Can... Like 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 you know, you have. We were talking about this. How like like guys like Seth are like, well, I'm going to go for U.S. title because well, I haven't done that yet. You know, yeah. mm-hmm. like like there's different prestige and lineage to each of those titles, right? Yeah. Or hell, you could even have someone who has not done well on the main roster like or has done too much on the main roster and say you know what i've never won and you know where i know the hot brand is i'm cashing in on the nxt championship and have Ooh. that be a huge a huge surprise at a takeover that'd be fun if the nxt guys just had a match on the main pay-per-view where am i in the bank yeah like that, that that could be a nice feature match but i mean i know it's kind of mixing brands a little bit but well, what is money in the bank. July? Every every pay per view is yeah, dual branded uh, now. Sork June. June, July is actually going to be extreme rules right here in Pittsburgh. Uh, and isn't aren't they doing the UK show again sometime in the summer? I think that's happening too. Yeah, they should have Pete Dunne defended at Money in the Bank to like promote the Ooh, UK thing. Ooh, yeah. I mean, it's mostly been kind of folded into like these kind of regional yeah. titles have been folded into NXT. Just anything, yeah. Money in the Bank, Chicago. Yes. Yeah. They'll, they'll probably and, do, and it's a, gonna, take, do yeah, it. Yeah, it's going well, to take over. They have announced the takeover Chicago. So, yeah, that is happening. Well, they'll, they'll, they'll probably have to defend it at takeover yeah. oh, yeah. Chicago. Yeah. Um, because right now he's, he's, I haven't caught last week's, but I know he's involved with a feud with Roderick. Yeah, he made Roderick Strong relevant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> he made man, Roderick Mike. Strong. He, I, I'm not going to lie. I kind of enjoyed Roderick Strong on NXT. Yeah, and Mike is coming I around on strong. I didn't think I didn't think that was possible, but Roderick Strong is a heel. I'm I'm listening. I'm listening. <laughs> I'm listening, 
Roddy, tell Mike your story. No, no, don't talk. Don't actually talk. Please, <laughs> for the love of God, don't actually talk. Just chop people so hard it makes them bleed and kick them in the head really hard. And then lose. That's all two. I need to see. Wait, and then lose. To... Well, yeah, he's a heel. It'll be a wonderful on. representation of the UK. Um, I, you see, Alex is saying, I don't know if this is news or, or opinion. Uh, wonder if the UK tournament gets a shot at Pete Dunne for the UK title. I would assume so. They said they said that uh, the tournament was on Monday. Was it a Monday show or a Sunday show? Mm. And the it was either last time they did it live. It was like Saturday so and Sunday. They're going to do the tournament, and then the next day at either Raw or SmackDown. I can't remember which one it was. There, whoever the winner of the tournament is, is in a number one contender match against Pete Dunne. For the is title. that in the UK? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. That's, that's cool. pretty cool. That's, that's a cool, cool concept yeah. to bridge all that over. Yeah. So that's a little bit like it's like the opposite. Well, of how, no, I don't know if it's in the UK. I think so. It, it's a little. Uh, I it hope. Should be. I hope it is because that makes a lot of sense. Uh, it's a little bit like remember that one time they did a King of the Ring where I think they started it on Raw, but then they had like an hour special on the network after SmackDown. Mm-hmm. This was early WWE Network. Where yeah, that I, was when um oh wait, fuck who Sheamus, won that? Sheamus won it, didn't he? Yeah, I Sheamus. believe it was Shamus. Uh, Shamus. 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 Oh, I really hope the new day starts saying that. <laughs> it is fun. It is fun. Um, and everybody makes anime references. So what? Over the bar in the new day. Anime references? Yeah, that uh, that pose. Yeah, they do. They do the fusion dance. They do the fusion dance from Dragon Ball. I just like them like torturing the bar with pancakes. I think it's hilarious. <laughs> Counterfeit pancakes. Um, no, they're real. Guys, what are the ones in Seamus' jacket? Also, Seamus having pancakes hanging from his jacket oh. was hilarious. JD is saying it was King Barrett. King Barrett won that one? Yeah. Ooh, that's why we never <laughs> went back. Uh, yeah, because we had some bad news. Ah, uh, no. Oh, boy. I hope his acting career is doing well. Um, he's a general manager now. He's a what? There's a um, promotion over in Europe called, well, it used to be called What Culture Pro Wrestling, but now it's Defiant, and he's the general manager. Good for him. Yeah. Really? That seems like a natural progression for his career. As general manager of an indie promotion yeah. in the UK? Yeah. Okay. I think he'd be a great GM. Hey, it worked for Eric Bischoff. And worked Cleveland. for Mick Foley. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, the he first can come time out around. every time a face gets a good win and say, I'm afraid I've got some bad news. Yeah, yeah that's perfect. It's, it's perfect. All right, guys. What did you learn from wrestling this week? Seth Rollins is a beast. Yeah. And The Miz, I think for a while he was underrated, but I think now people are finally putting him on that level where he should have been. I learned that there's slowly becoming a clash of worlds for Mad Mike with all the TNA references happening on the WWE mm. Network now. Yeah, yeah. You do. So you guys both watched that table for three, and I understand something very interesting happened during and after that. Mike, uh, Mike had a relapse. Mike, Mike had a relapse. <laughs> yeah, so, By the way, so, uh, Sword, we did have a request before we get into this bullshit. We, <laughs> we did have a request in the chat room before I start my new job to have a TNA therapy session round two. <laughs> I we, had, we had a request. Oh, dude, I had a request from Shirley Doe himself that he needs to have another one. Okay, I'm so down. yeah, this needs to happen, and we need to. Okay. Uh, uh, Mike, do, do you yeah. have him on Facebook? I do not know. Uh, <laughs> you should make a group, like a self help group. Well, I was gonna say, well, I was gonna make a Facebook group so we could all work out a date, but uh, <laughs> but I guess that works too. Um, Anyways, um, I learned somebody might have an extra show in September. Um, but anyways, uh, <laughs> sorry, somebody's messaging me. Um, I think Matt uh, Matt Carlin's is still on the Percocets. He said, I learned ECW in the late 1996, early 1997 was amazing. Uh, we know what he was doing while he's recovering from <laughs> surgery now. Uh, mm-hmm. Okay, so there was a table for three. Kurt Angle and AJ Styles. And who was the third? Shane, Shane? O'Mac. Shane, yeah. But there was a lot of reference to TNA wrestling between AJ and Kurt. So they were talking about they were talking about how they faced each other a lot in TNA and they talked about how Shane and AJ had their WrestleMania moment and uh working with each other. 
and um, they played some clips from a Kurt Angle match back when they had a six-sided ring, and it mm-hmm. ended in a DV- DDT off the top rope. Jeez. Yeah. Jeez. Wait, wait was Kurt um, delivering, or... No, nope. He no, was taking Kurt, Kurt, the guy Kurt with the Nick, in, Nick injury was taking a DDT <laughs> off the top rope. Yep. I now Sorry. okay. I'm he not on, a wrestler. He was on heavy pain. I don't know at how time. actually dangerous this is. Lee, does that sound like a good idea to you? Uh, <laughs> depends how much he's getting paid. Uh, there you go. It's, right. it's, it's TNA. It's TNA. So you this was, didn't. This was in the six sided ring. Yeah. yeah, and that ring's like really yeah. stiff. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. Shit. I mean, he's Kurt Angle. He knows better he, than I do. He was on heavy painkillers at the time. Oh, I it's bet fine. he was. Oh, he, I bet was. he was. He's admitted it. But anyway, so they showed the footage, and you said, and, and and there you said that there was a a go check out the DGWN app. For yeah, more I sent footage. I sent you the photo. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. It said at the at the end of the credits, it said, uh, "Where is it?" Yeah, sort. Remember when I, when I compared um, uh, Raw last night to a DC. DC Comics movie, that's what Table for Three was because you wait for the credits on that and you really got hosed. <laughs> it said to watch all AJ Styles versus Kurt Angle Impact Wrestling matches in their entirety. Download the Global Wrestling Network app, available on all your favorite streaming devices. And I'd like to point out, please do not download that app because, from what I remember hearing, the uh, payment information is not protected. I'm sure they fixed that by now. <laughs> I no, don't think so. I'm don't, sure they sword, dude, just sword, no. d- sword, go to listen, look just, at the company. Listen, no go to privacy.com, get yourself a burner credit card so that they don't steal any more than the twenty bucks you put in there, okay? That's the answer to that question. Wow. Or just don't do it. <laughs> get a or gift just, card. Or just don't do it. Don't wait, watch impact more than you have to. Wait another three months, it'll be on the WWE network. Yep. Mm. Or you could not watch it on that either and just watch New Japan instead. And or you could just go to YouTube and type in TNA. You'll be able to find something. There you go. Whether or not it's wrestling, we don't know. Who else learned stuff this weekend? <sighs> Mike? I learned that I learned that we shouldn't have pay per views after WrestleMania. <laughs> <laughs> just we just we, be off for a while. We we just shouldn't. We should just have a break, um, like a month off. We should we should just have a break. Well, they kind of had a month off. No, nothing not significant really. really happened. We should. They should just play table for threes and and ride alongs in that spot where Raw is for a month. Mm-hmm. Just, just to give that, everybody I'd be a okay rest, with that. You know. You know what? I would be I would be really okay with that because then I definitely would delete the WWE network. It was, I mean, and I could, hey, and... binge watching ride along is one of my favorite things to do. I'm yeah. not gonna lie. Oh yeah. I, the the latest ride along with New Day where where Biggie actually pulls out a griddle, <laughs> that's pretty amazing. That is so dangerous. So and, please don't try and, this at home. <laughs> yeah, they even they even put, do not try this at home. Yeah, yeah. Do I don't not. think he was actually making pancakes in there. No, There's nowhere I don't. to plug I, it in. I'm. J- <sighs> no, I'm Larry, saying that I'm it's trying... a disclaimer. It's a disclaimer. Yeah, I know. I'm tr- I'm trying to I'm trying to let them have their gimmick. Guys from uh, uh, Twitter, Riz chimes in uh, that uh, he learned that after running a half marathon, I have no intention on watching wrestling unless I'm dream- dreaming of, her- of it, which I did. Mm-hmm. Riz did a half marathon, of course, in the Pittsburgh Marathon. He was yes. uh, texting me from his hotel room downtown, and he couldn't <laughs> even get up here to Beachview from downtown. I was like, dude, there's a train. No. Dude, I will send a car for you. More than that. More than coming to the studio to watch wrestling after running the marathon downtown, he didn't. <laughs> he didn't drive to his own house to no, sleep. No, he took an Uber. He oh, did, but he got a hotel. He got a hotel. <laughs> he he's okay, like hold, hold he, no, no 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 this no respect man. to him because he's like I'm running oh a, yeah I'm running a half oh, yeah. marathon for the first time in my life. I'm gonna fucking pamper myself with a with mm-hmm. a car and 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 I'm gonna get myself an Uber. I'm getting a driver. Uh, I, I'm uh, you know he's, he's he's driving Miss Riz. Uh, you know down to my hotel room downtown and from where the pin was downtown. I think he got a nice hotel room. You guys. I was gonna say I don't blame Riz at all. I did a relay for life when I was still living in the Bronx, where I walked for the entire twelve hours. I did not stop. 
I walked back up to my apartment. I did not move for the next 15 hours. Oh, yeah. So I don't blame I don't blame Riz at all. I just I think it's, I just thought all. it was hilarious. Mm-hmm. Cause I I did the relay for that marathon like three years ago. Mm-hmm. Like without any prep at all. No running. I didn't run nice. for like six months before that. And I just did one tiny stretch of it going over the West End Bridge. And it was like I had Andre the Giant dragging by my feet, trying to lift my legs up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm done. I'm done. We're going to sign you up for the Hell on Hills 5K here. Nope. Yep. Nope. Yep. Uh, I see you running by, oh, slogging by Sorg. the studio. Sorg, I also learned one more thing. I learned that Braun Strowman hates Arbor Day. What? Why? Because he rips down trees with houses in them. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> that sounds so weird, the treehouse story. And I tuned yeah. in like five minutes late, so I didn't catch anything. I just tuned in. That's... I just tuned in to Braun telling Kurt Angle this story about a treehouse. That's probably start a story raw. Vince thought was hilarious. Uh, Can we stop having 70 year olds 70 year olds write wrestling? I didn't hate it, but Alex also learned uh how the living hell does Mundo get the gauntlet. I have a theory on this. Is that for this show? Yes. Okay. I have a theory. I have a theory. All right. Uh so my theory is that Cage has the gauntlet and Mundo says I have a plan. And basically you have um oh fuck. I'm trying. Jack Evans uh Goes after one arm. Then you have uh, uh, PJ, PJ Black going after the other arm. Then you have um, what was what was the um, the guy who wanted to be Johnny Mundo? What's his Ricky name? Mandel. Ricky Mandel. Ricky Mundo. I was gonna be a smart ass and say yeah. Joey Mercury. No, R- Ricky Mundo. <laughs> Ricky Mundo attacking the legs. Um, then Taya magically leaps down on top of Cage's <laughs> shoulders. Magically. Tries to force him to sleep, and then Johnny Mundo is able to pull the gauntlet off, uh, similar to this. Similar to to this. What's he doing? It's a, he's pulling. It's, he's pulling. He's suggestively pulling, pulling the gauntlet off of Lego. Off of uh, off of off of Lego, Lego Thanos. Thanos. Okay. The all right. He, yeah, that much okay, yeah, fluid from the other monitor. I couldn't really yeah, see what he yeah. was doing. It was. Yep. It's okay. Yep. It's okay. Strange. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. So everything's going to be okay. Fine. Everything's fine. Pe- yes. People who have seen a thing know what I'm talking about. That's right. I don't think and Cage has it, though. Uh, I think King Cuerno has it. Yeah. Qu- yeah, yeah, I Cuerno know. Could I very if you think Cuerno is keeping it for long, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see Puma come back. Uh, I, don't, I don't think, I I think don't that think would be hol- happen. I think that would be hilarious. They moved out of Boyle Heights, so he 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 stayed in Boyle Heights. I think you could have actually, like a knock off, you could have a knockoff Puma. Yeah, it'd be great if they explained Son it that Puma. like he, he he can't leave Boyle Heights because he had an ankle bracelet on the whole time. But <laughs> wouldn't that be funny right? though, seeing Puma like doing that while he's on NXT? Oh, you mean like Hernandez when he came back to Impact Wrestling while they were airing Lucha Underground in the first season? I've never watched. Mm. Uh, Impact Wrestling. This has never happened. <laughs> Nor should Different you. Worlds. Different yeah, worlds. Different worlds. I I I I, I, li- I I live a Impact free lifestyle. By the way, uh, there was a yeah. I'm just gonna geez. We're going long on the outro, but uh, shout out to our our boy uh, DJ Z. He posted. <laughs> thank you. Uh, I think it's a four minute clip it of the 15 minute match that includes um him and Drago and Aerostar and a few other great guys. That are there. I think a lot of them were part of the match you saw in the Impact versus Lucha yeah. uh, uh, thing, which is amazing. And, and, it, and the statement was, "This is what happens when you give uh, uh, six Lucha guys fifteen minutes and the freedom to do what they want." It was a match like this. Mm-hmm. And it was it was pretty great. Uh, so I mean, again, my eyes keep yeah, going I back. Think to they, I think they, they had got... the exact same guys from the Impact versus Lucha. It show. sounds like yeah, it, it sounds like. It was yeah, like, I hey, think let's... the other ones were um, Desmond Desmond Xavier, right, Andrew, Andrew Everett. Everett. Caleb Conley and um, uh, Muerte, uh, not Muerte, um, bleh, Cuerno, or Van- or Phantasma as he's called in TNA. Conley was in like a scramble or something in Impact versus Lucha. Oh wait, and who was it? Who was the third it was, guy? Um, Aerostar, Drago, and King Cuerno or El Hijo del Phantasma. Yeah, oh, uh, DJZ yeah. was on the Impact side. That's right. Oh, yeah. Phantasmo's Cuerno. Yeah. Okay, because yeah, that's the one I couldn't place out of it, but that makes sense now. Mm-hmm. 
He seemed familiar. He moved yeah. familiar. <laughs> but anyways. Uh, all right, guys. On that note, hey, Lee Moriarty, where can people find you online and your sweet, sweet promo videos? <laughs> you can find me online at Apex of Combat on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook, Lee Moriarty. There you go. Uh, what you got coming up? Um, this weekend, I have the Fight Society in McKeesport. Nice. Next weekend, I'll be in Cleveland for Premier Wrestling, which I better get a welterweight title match after what happened. And then the following week, the 27th, I'll be wrestling Robbie E. in Salem, Ohio. Followed so, by your face tattoo. That's right. That's right. I'm going to win, and I'm going to get that money. Work on that frown, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm frowning now. You Work on that frown, man. <laughs> we'll come back. Face, we'll give you some more face. lessons. There you go. Give, give us one more. Give us one more for the road. Lion face. <laughs> lemon face. This is my life. What? Your lemon, lemon face. face. Lemon, lemon face. face. Oh. Oh, that's getting better. That's yeah, actually that yeah, is getting it's better. That is getting better. Did I mention Bobby F. J. Towns? Uh, apparently, uh, they learned that Paige didn't watch Backlash. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Paige said it was a hell of a show. Hmm. Okay, all right. And uh, JD also learned that Lashley has horrible sisters. Oh, (laughs) jeez. They really Uh, are the worst. Thanks, Lee. Thanks, Larry. Lee and Larry. Hey. (laughs) That works. It's like you planned that. Yeah, Mad Mike, who kips the New York, who may or may not be on future episodes of the show. I don't know yet. Yeah, well, but regardless of if I'm on this show, once Lucha comes back, somehow, some way, there will be a mid-week war. Fantastic. Somehow. Fantastic. Yes. Thank you, everybody in the chat room joining us all night long. And join us here at 9 p.m. Eastern time every Tuesday on the Facebook. We'll see you guys next time. Oh, stay tuned. Producer, uh, producer, producer Missy. Producer, producer Missy. I'm producer, Missy. producer Missy. Hello, Producer I'm Missy. Thank you so me. much Don't for sending that. me all the stuff and... I, and, and and the things and the stuff, and I would have had a better outro for her if I didn't get stepped on by Mike. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I was just making sure. Mike, he was supposed to forget pro- producer Misty because I have heat with her right now. You have heat with her? And I was trying to divert it to Sorg. Oh, no, no, not that. <laughs> oh. That's diabolical. Uh, but no, uh, we have the rest of, and actually I think tomorrow's is going to be Lee's uh, episode of the On Location for Indie Mayhem from uh, Walter Dwight Wrestling. <laughs> That's his laughing face. <laughs> He's angry right now. I'm oh, always that was, angry. That wasn't bad. Yeah, I'm always angry. You just need to laugh first and then just switch it. It's all about comparison. Yeah. There you go. I'm for like, like a split second, I saw some anger. That's why the lion I'm face and lemon angry. face works. But it's that sweet spot right in the middle. But it's been a lot of fun watching these interviews. Um, unfortunately, the mic failed, but we, we, they're, they're still good and fun. Uh, uh, Rory Gulak, in which uh, uh, Katie asked, uh, which is the better Gulak? <laughs> there did, you go. Katie a- did Katie ask what his skills at PowerPoint were, or is he more of a Microsoft Excel guy? Oh, I don't think they got into that, but there was, oh. there was a little bit of throwdown because he's a Flyers fan. <laughs> what the fuck, Sorg? Uh, I also talked to uh, episodes with um, Frightmare, the Fresh Prince of Midair, Trey Miguel. Am I yeah. getting that? Cole Raddick just went up today. Uh, Dylan Bostic again. And uh, there's somebody else, Brian Pillman Jr. Uh, and Jackson Argos after uh, what happened there at Walter White Wrestling with, uh, with Gregory Iron. So, and, and talked with a lot of guys at Welterweight Wrestling that, that haven't been on the show, like Greg, uh, for a while. So, uh, we're going to be uh, trying to reach out and uh, connect with those guys, too. So, thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you, Producer Missy. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.